Okay, welcome back everyone to the Saskatchewan Wildlife Federation Youth Conservation Leadership Speaker Series. This week we are joined by Kayla balderson Barak with the Nature Conservancy of Canada. Thank you very much for coming in, Kayla. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful to see you. Okay, so let's get started. Um, tell me, Kayla, what do you what do you do? What do you do for your job? Yeah, I am currently the engagement manager for Nature Conservancy of Canada in the Saskatchewan region. Um, so I manage basically all kind of public facing educational programs. So our conservation volunteer program, uh, which puts people uh, directly on on the land, helping with conservation and stewardship work. Um, uh, run a couple different youth programs, uh, like our Learning the Land program with Treaty Education Alliance. Um, and a couple other programs like Nature Destinations, which really tries to bring awareness to, to how people can get outside and explore nature. Um, so anything kind of uh, engagement or public education related, I'm a part of in Saskatchewan. That's right? awesome. It sounds like you have your hand in a whole lot of things. <laughs> it's, it's a really cool mix of things and it's always something new and something different because we're always kind of trying to change the way we engage uh, people in nature. So it's, it's an exciting job. It's never the same thing. That's awesome. That's a great job. I, I really like having a job like that too. <laughs> yeah. So what was it that made you interested in a position like this? Like, were you always kind of pining way of being an engagement uh, officer or like, is this something relatively new? No, it wasn't something that I was always thinking about, um, which is why I was really intrigued to do this with you, because I think it's really important for, for young people to keep in mind to not close the door before one ever opens. Um, I have a science background, um, have a science degree and a master's of science um, in research and species at risk. And I always pictured myself um, staying in that kind of science research area. Mm -hmm. um, but when I moved to Saskatchewan six years ago, um, I got a job as the manager of the Saskatchewan Prairie Conservation Action Plan. And that was, uh, yeah, very public education related. Yeah. And I was a little unsure of it at first, but it just totally sparked this passion within me to kind of um, not only take my experience and what I've learned, but um, to kind of help connect everyone in the province and, and share that education and all that science and um, get people more involved in the science and in nature, because that turns into so much else. Um, for conservation. Um, so I never pictured myself on this path <laughs> in public education, but um, I'm, I'm so glad I'm here. It is, um, it's, it's really cool to be able to mix um, science and public education and kind of combine the two and use those two passions and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's really cool. You yeah, seem to have a similar background to me, so I totally understand. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, you mentioned that you have a biology degree and you have a, a master's in biology. Is there any other like uh, steps that you would take to get into a role like yours or what would you recommend? Oh, I don't think any extra steps, any extra steps, but I, what I wish I had when I started that job with the Prairie Conservation Action Plan, and even now in this role with NCC, is a little bit more of a um, more of a I don't want to say business, but maybe even like financial um, business planning right. kind of experience to go from a completely research based lifestyle to um, managing an organization or managing um, different volunteer programs was a little daunting and I kind of wish I had a little bit more of a business sense. <laughs> yeah, I just had to kind of get that very quickly on the fly, uh, yeah. <laughs> which thankfully I had incredible mentors and supervisors to teach me. Um, but I, you know, it's never too early to start um, I guess thinking about that kind of thing, what else might be beneficial to you other than just the science and the technical skills and especially yeah. today with so many different online and virtual options like you can take a free three day beginner business course, you know, through the yeah. University of Alberta, things like that, that yeah. there's so many options out there. To, so to kind of start 
That's a really good point. I, a lot of our interviewees brought up too that like, you know, uh, they didn't realize how much communication had to do with their yes. job. And that's another one that, you know, you don't necessarily think of at the top of your head when you think outdoor education with science, but it's definitely useful. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a really good point too. It's like social media and how you have to communicate with people these yeah. days. Absolutely. And because it's always changing too. So <laughs> it's hard yeah. to keep yep. Mm -hmm. so okay so you kind of mentioned some of the things that you get to do in your job which are super cool but what kind of like is there a big difference between what you do in the summertime versus in the wintertime like what have you been up to during the last cold freeze we've just been in or like is it not much <laughs> is it, or is it just mostly <laughs> planning for the summer ahead or yeah exactly yeah so our summer field our summer season is definitely the busiest for both our conservation staff and our more development engagement staff like myself. Um, but the spring and summer and even as long as we can into the fall, we're doing as many volunteer events as we can, as many donor tours as we can. Um, you know, this year we're get, starting to get a lot more and obviously into the virtual stuff, but um, yeah, a lot more um, um, even just like tours from the field or like things that you can do outside in the field and then bring virtually to people. Um, you know, in the house, if, if we're still, still inside the summer a bit more, but um, yeah, it's, uh, so summer is definitely busier for us. It's the time that we want to get everyone outside and get that hands-on experience and um, help deliver on some of these conservation objectives that the, that team needs help with. Our volunteer program um, has a big part of accomplishing some of those goals. So it's the time that we, that we want to get it all done for sure. And then okay. the winter is a lot yeah. more um, kind of, uh, more virtual stuff, more webinars instead of in-person events and um, different different projects like updating interpretive signage or, um, you know, educational materials or that kind of thing, right? And then, of course, yeah. planning for the upcoming season, what you want to do and getting all your materials ready and, and that kind of thing. But. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm sure like with COVID, um, it's turned a lot of our programming on its head and we've had to go yeah. with a lot of things, just kind of like this. Um, yeah. So <laughs> the last year has been a bit of a challenge, but it's going to be nice when we can get back outside with people again <laughs> yeah um okay uh so what kind of person would you suggest like like i said i took a similar path to you which is interesting ending up in outdoor education role um but for somebody out there who's like trying to figure out what they want to do in the future what would like what kind of people would really like your job you know what i mean oh what kind of people like I do mean, they never, have to be outdoorsy people or are they people who just really like planning have to be really you know, um, yeah, maybe like a little bit of, yeah, maybe a little bit of both. Um, definitely have to be a, at least a little bit of a social person. I wouldn't go so far as say extrovert. I don't consider myself a huge extrovert, but I'm fairly social. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm not like right out there. Um, but a little bit social because you do have to enjoy meeting new people, striking up conversations, right? Like right. trying to engage right. volunteers or, or donors or whatever it might be. Um, so you definitely have to have that appetite to want to mm -hmm. put yourself out there a little bit, get out of your comfort zone and talk to new people and get to know them and let them get to know you. Um, definitely have to like planning and thinking ahead. I mean, we have, we just basically planned our entire next year um right like that process starts so early so you yeah. have, to, you have to like um like that um yeah I think I uh, think outside the box a little people are always wanting to try new things and do new yeah. things yeah. right in yeah. nature and want new experiences um so to kind of be creative that way and be willing to um learn from what other people are doing and like other organizations like yourself and yeah yeah that's a really good point yeah no that's good that's a good call so if you weren't in your role right now and you could have any other job in the world what what career would you be chasing after oh, <laughs> is there one or you have you found the jackpot no i <laughs> i think one. i found the jackpot I'm yeah happy where i am that that's question awesome. definitely brings me back to oh like middle school and everyone yeah, wants right. to be like that <laughs> right like everyone yeah. wants to be a rheumologist or <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, if I, you know, I, I would, um, yeah, I don't think I would, I can picture myself anywhere else because, especially because I am allowed, uh, allowed, um, my job does allow me to bring in my science background and kind of implement that into different mm. events. 
um, and work on different projects that are still science and conservation related. Um, because I have that mix in there, I, I can't picture myself doing anything else. But if I didn't have that, I would definitely want to be somewhere where there was more science involved. Okay, cool. That's a really good answer. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess I'll switch gears a little bit. Um, if I was somebody in high school right now looking or university trying to figure out wanting to go into outdoor education, are there any organizations that you would recommend, you know, helping out with? Does NCC take on volunteers? You know, like, uh, I guess that kind of thing. Like, where would you, where would you look to? I know volunteer experience is really valuable on resumes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and we're so okay. fortunate in Saskatchewan. There's so many organizations to volunteer for. Um, and you just, you never know what those experiences can turn into. We've had volunteers that have become interns and um, yeah, you just never know. Just send the email. You never know what things can turn into. Um, or what doors it might open. And I have point. a lot of volunteers, young student volunteers who I'm referenced, who I act as a reference for on resumes and super and, value. Yeah, super value. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, NCC, you can sign up right on our website to be cool. to get emails for our conservation volunteer programs. So you can find out about what events we're doing right away. Um, we do different, we do really hands-on type events like fence poles, weed poles, but then we also do um, restoration projects like whatever, milkweed planting, tree planting, that kind of thing. Um, so definitely um, a big variety of different events to choose from. Um, but yeah, there's so many different organizations in Saskatchewan, even something like, um, oh, I can't like, I can't even... Uh, like you know nature saskatchewan would be another yep. really good one even like mm -hmm. wildlife rehab right like just mm -hmm. anything just to so kind of start i guess to basically and... if you have some if you have an interest just go looking for organizations that cater to that interest absolutely go for it. yeah i think that's a really good piece of advice right there it's just, to, we've, just had, we've had random you know kind of students email us looking for volunteer work and we if we happen to have this i don't know data set or it's kind of hard right now with COVID, but um, sometimes some people have emailed us at just the right time where we have a data set that needs to be organized or or something like that, that maybe isn't necessarily the most glamorous job. But uh, it needs to get done, that's the important part. <laughs> yeah, and then we've been like, hey, are you interested in doing this? And, and then they do, and it's, uh, yeah, you never know where it can go. Yeah, and those connections are so valuable and you can use them yeah. years down the road. I know I'm still using some of my references for my volunteering, so yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. So, um, Kayla, on your days off, when you have free time, uh, what kind of extracurricular activities are you into? Are you uh, outside checking out bugs and fields or like, do you have any extracurricular activities that feed into your job or is it like a you turn it off when you go home for the weekend. <laughs> no, my husband also works for NCC. He's the program director for Southwest Saskatchewan. Um, and we have a four-year-old daughter. So when it's not <laughs> minus 40, yeah. So when we're, um, when it's not minus 40, we're outside. Um, and we were so blessed this past year um, in a lot of ways with, normally our summers are so packed. My husband is always out in the field doing field work. I'm pretty much away every other weekend, if not every weekend at different events. So this summer was a real slowdown and we um, were able to go visit so many NCC properties that we cool. wouldn't have had the time to otherwise. Um, yeah. So it's definitely, now that our daughter's getting a bit older, it's definitely uh, more of a passion of ours to get her outside and exploring. And um, yeah, I also really love the past few years, I've really established a love for taking photos of people in nature. Oh, nice. The life of me, I can't take photos of just nature, like landscape <laughs> pots or like, did my daughter take that? Like, but I don't know, I, I can't do it. I've tried, I've taken up the courses. I can't, I just don't have the eye for it. But yeah. there's some things <laughs> about people in nature that I just have. It's your uh, niche. Kind of, it's very specific. Yeah, but... it's just. That's yeah, cool. it's, it's just, it's definitely um, um, been a little bit of a, of a hobby of mine um, yeah. that I've really clung to. It's just, it, yeah, but um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Photography is another great one because I know we were encouraging people to get out this summer and social distance. And of course, I mean, with like NCC properties or SWF properties all over the place, like, you know, that's another great way to just get out there and just try something new and you can be completely by yourself and yes. just enjoy the moment. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So before we go, Kayla, um, I have, this might be a tricky question, but um, 
if you could give one piece of advice to anybody looking to their futures, whether it's in high school or university or out in the world as they are right now, um, what would it be? Like, what would that piece of advice be? Yeah, I think two things really come to mind. I think my first piece of advice would be if it's possible and if you can't get it in school, then to try to get it through volunteer experience is to get that really hands-on technical training. Mm. Um, yeah, like it just provides skills and experiences that you just can't get in a four-year university program. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, like some, myself, some of my coworkers, um, went to Lakeland College, it's just one of many examples yeah. um, to do a technical diploma before we, we went to university and we got that full two year transfer. And I can't, I mean, now where I'm at, I don't, I didn't, I don't need that technical yeah. diploma. Yeah. <laughs> but if you but had taken those, another path, it would have been very uh, useful. Yeah. yeah, but those hands-on technical experiences and certifications and skills that you get, you just don't get, you know, in a traditional university setting. I think those are some of the uh, and skills that I'm most proud of and um and some of the best memories too um, absolutely but yeah and then I would also just say kind of loop back to what I said at the beginning just to not close any doors before they open because you truly never know what something can turn into or spark a um, a passion inside of you that you didn't know existed yeah didn't see coming sometimes sometimes exactly. that's the best way yeah <laughs> yeah Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kayla. This was wonderful getting to know you today. Oh, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, everybody tune in next week. We're going to be interviewing another professional in conservation. Thanks.